first chapter of the textbook but before that um, i will mention again one thing which i mentioned already so i said this course has three main modules so can anyone tell me what these modules are do you remember i mentioned this couple of times what are the three main parts of this course yeah yeah so complexity theory yeah complexity theory computability theory and automata theory right and i also said that complexity theory depends on computability theory which in turn depends on automata theory so we'll cover them in the reverse order so automata theory will be covered before computability theory and computability theory will be covered before complexity theory all right so the modules will be covered in the order of 3 2 1 okay so first we we'll look at automata theory then computability theory and then complexity theory all right and um, before moving on to automata theory i want you to get an idea of the overall structure of the kind of things which we will which we will discuss in this course okay so this is chomsky and hierarchy um so chomsky non chomsky he is a linguist he gave this hierarchy of four levels of languages in fact he said that we humans are beings with innate grammar we are linguistic beings you see that is the reason why i i mentioned this already earlier once <laughs> whenever you listen to a sentence how do you understand its meaning because almost every sentence you listen to you are hearing it for the first time in your life that particular sentence you are hearing it for the first time in your life it's very rare that you hear the same sentence twice because even if you are explaining the same topic 10 times or 100 times or even i am explaining the same thing 10 times or 100 times every time i explain slightly differently every time i use slightly different sentences right but still you understand every sentence i speak or every sentence you read how do you do this how are we able to do this right it's not like we have a database of all possible sentences and we have their corresponding meanings also stored in the database and we just search for the sentence we heard from the database and pick up that sentence and pick up its meaning and understand like that no we don't have such a database all right we actually sort of parse the sentences which we get and we understand their structure we understand the relationships between the words and the meanings of the words and the way these words are connected together to form the meaning of the sentence right so we understand the grammar of the language it is because we understand the grammar of the language no matter how many sentences you give me they are potentially infinite i still always understand that sentence because i understand the grammar of the entire language okay so grammar is finite so only 
grammar is sort of stored if at all one can say that we only store grammar of the language we don't store every possible sentence in the language all right so this grammar is innate to us actually again this grammar is not taught like in schools a child learns a language normally that's why in childhood you have the ability to learn you know even 10 languages or 20 languages very easily but once as you grow it is difficult to learn new languages okay so looking at our surroundings looking at the way people speak we just learn language right so we are linguistic beings we have an innate ability to grasp the grammar of a language and i would extend it to say we have an innate ability to grasp the grammar of anything not only language everything has a grammar grammar means pattern so we grasp the pattern of anything anything we come across we grasp the pattern of someone's behavior we grasp the pattern of um, uh, an object we grasp the pattern of a culture we grasp the pattern of a society so we grasp all these complex patterns we grasp the pattern of music we grasp the pattern of dance all these things have a grammar or a pattern and we have an innate ability to grasp them that's why i say when you look at a particular kind of dance you somehow immediately say okay this is maybe bharatnatyam this is kuchpudi this is flamenco this is salsa whatever it is you sort of grasp the patterns of the dance so that when you see those style of movements you immediately can detect which particular kind of dance it is so we grasp grammar not only of language but of varieties of things all right so but uh, chomsky basically came up with computational grammars he said there are four levels of computational grammars actually four levels of languages and each language has a grammar and a recognizer or a machine which recognizes it a grammar generates the language as an output and a machine or a parser or a recognizer recognizes this language by taking it as input okay so when you write any programming language in uh, a program in any programming language be it c c++ python java whatever it is there is a so when you say you are compiling it what do you mean there is a parser compiler is a much bigger thing of which parser is one part subroutine there is a parser which takes this sentence this entire program is like one sentence which takes this sentence as input and does something it breaks it down into different words different keywords different instructions and it executes these instructions all right so basically a parser knows the grammar of say c language there is another parser which knows the grammar of say python language there is another parser which knows the language of uh, which knows the grammar of say java right so these parsers know the grammar because of which they can recognize any sentence which is a program they can take that program as input and sort of parse it break it down and then execute those instructions on a computer on a cpu all right so you have a parser or a machine or a recognizer which takes a language and its sentences as input and what it does with that uh, it can do many things it can just say whether uh, this is a valid sentence or not a valid sentence that's it it just say sort of prints true or false or more than printing true or false it understands those instructions and then executes those instructions okay so usually compiler has a parser which reads a string and also it has a portion a subroutine which executes the instructions all right and a grammar generates language as output so it can generate potentially infinite strings in the language so a practical application of grammar is nothing specific what do you do by generating infinite sentences nothing specifically but a grammar is more useful in the sense that it is easy for a human to understand the pattern of the language a parser is difficult for a human to understand a parser is more easy for a computer to understand a grammar is more easy for a human to understand so for a human to describe a language it is easy to describe the language by giving its grammar grammar is nothing but a finite set of rules we look at grammars and parsers and all that so from a human perspective grammars are necessary because they are easy for human to understand and also to communicate with other humans now another advantage is if i can express the grammar of a language this grammar can be automatically translated into a parser so there are programs which take a grammar as input and construct a parser automatically so you need not write the parser by hand 
actually writing all the instructions of what to do when a string is given you need not write it by hand you just write the grammar by hand and uh, give it to a software that software translates this grammar into a parser so you can directly use that parser as part of your compiler that's it okay so parser is mainly for the machine parser takes language as input grammar is mainly for humans grammar generates language as output all right so this is the sort of uh, relation uh, between these three things so every language has a corresponding grammar and a machine which is a parser so you have a grammar which generates output which is language and then this language can be given as input to machine or we can call it as parser or we can call it as recognizer or we can also call it as automaton okay so we look at all this so there are four levels of languages each language has specific um, so basically each language in this series is a subset of the next language okay this is a subset of this uh, this is a subset of this and uh, this is a subset of this okay so i can say subset of all right regular languages um are more related to regular expressions i don't know how many of you heard of regular expressions you heard right even in programming languages you can use regular expressions like uh, particularly in scripting languages um like python perl bash uh php in all these languages you can use regular expressions even if you don't know regular expressions you sort of use them indirectly like when you are searching for a word in uh, say uh, microsoft word or um, any text editor when you are searching for a word say you can have options like um, um, should the search be case sensitive or case insensitive suppose if i want it to be case sensitive then wherever uh, capital letters are there i want exact matches that in the corresponding search also the capital letters should be there or if it is case insensitive i am just giving the letters independent of the case whether they are capital letters small letters you just give all the words okay so this is one kind of uh, regular expression i will give an example of regular expression just in a while but regular languages mainly sort of uh, help you in capturing the pattern of strings in a language using regular expressions to some extent there can be patterns which also involve counts there can be uh multiple kinds of patterns pattern in which just the order is uh, important okay like first a should come some series of a a and then some series of b and then some series of c that's okay the count doesn't matter some number of a's followed by some number of b's followed by some number of c's okay so that can be represented as a regular expression a star b star c star so it is like zero or a's zero or more a's followed by zero or more b's followed by zero or more c's so this these kind of strings can be captured using the regular expression a star b star c star but suppose i want only those strings where some n number of a's are followed by same number of b's if i have 10 a's i should ha also have 10 b's if i have 20 a's it should also have 20 b's okay the count should not differ so not just the order that a should be followed by b's but also the count should match that class of languages fall in second class they are not part of regular languages they can't be captured by regular expressions you need to move to a more powerful set of languages that, that is called context free languages okay so they can have uh, strings of the form a power n b power n where you are also able to count number of a's and match them with number of b's in regular expressions you can't you can count but you can't store that count okay so you can't match the count of a's and b's so counting is not really possible in regular languages whereas it is possible in context free languages but if you go one step further counting across 
three different kinds of symbols a power n b power n c power n that is not possible in context free languages that is a entirely different set of languages called context sensitive languages okay so if you have to match number of a's with number of b's and number of c's also a third symbol also that is not possible in context free languages you need to come to context sensitive languages and finally independent of count uh, it can be count it can be order everything which can be computed or which is computable any computable function can be captured in something called recursively enumerable language and the machine which recognizes a recursively enumerable language is called a turing machine okay so we will look at all these uh, languages we will actually look at um, all except the context sensitive language except this we will look at uh, the remaining three things we will look at regular languages we will look at context free languages and we will look at recursively enumerable languages all right so regular languages have regular grammars which generate regular languages and the corresponding parser which recognizes the regular languages uh, or machines they are called deterministic or non deterministic finite state acceptor or deterministic or non deterministic finite state automata finite state machines you can call them in any way they are all the same and uh, context free languages they are generated by context free grammars and they are recognized using something called non deterministic push down automata we will look at that context sensitive languages they are generated using context sensitive grammars and they are recognized using linear bounded automata and recursively enumerable languages they are generated using unrestricted grammars and they are recognized using turing machines so these are the widest class of languages recursively enumerable languages this set of languages is the widest set of languages possible which can be recognized by a computer okay so this is the hierarchy of languages we will slowly move on in sequence first we will look at regular languages and regular grammars and finite automata then we will look at context free languages context free grammars and push down automata then finally we will look at uh, turing machines recursively enumerable languages and unrestricted grammars okay so this is the sequence all right so now let's um, move on to the first part of the book so i am using the book chapters titles so part 1 deals with automata theory and the first chapter is about regular languages okay so in this course we will be discussing not any physical computer we will be discussing an idealized computer or the idea of a um, uh, ideal computer or we can also call it as computational model okay so these are theoretical versions of the practical computers which we use you can imagine this like uh, uh discussing ideal conditions in physics right we know physical world does not exactly have ideal conditions but we when we come up with laws or theories we come up with theories for ideal conditions right like uh, where do you find a practical example of the first law of physics first law of motion new out of newton's three laws of motion where do you find the practical example of the first law you never find that practical example right a body which is in constant motion or at rest continues to be in constant motion or at rest in the absence of any opposing force where will you find that example do you ever see any body which is in constant motion forever no that scenario never occurs in reality but one sort of imagined such an ideal condition and then came up with a law right so similarly here we are discussing idealized computers or computational models these are mathematical models or mathematical definitions of the practical computers which we use their ideal versions okay 
so this helps us in understanding the strengths and limitations of the computers we use what problems are possible uh, to be solvable on the computers which we use what problems are not solvable how complex they are how easy they are right so all these things can be discussed at a theoretical level and they will also help you while translating them into practical computers right um, so if some problem is not solvable i need not spend resources on that problem right or if some problem takes so many years then uh, if it is still necessary for me to solve that problem then i will understand that i need so much computation power to reduce the time complexity right so we can think like that if we can understand these issues at a theoretical level so they also have practical applications it's not like they remain only at a theoretical theoretical level this is again like uh, loss of motion in physics they are also have practical applications is because of those laws we are able to do whatever physics in uh, daily life right we are able to build automobiles and uh, all kinds of things all kinds of technology is possible because those laws exist okay so among different computational models the simplest computational model is what is called as finite automaton or finite state machine <laughs> now within <clears throat> finite automaton there are two kinds deterministic finite automaton abbreviated as dfa and non deterministic finite automaton abbreviated as nfa we will look at these later but currently we are just discussing a finite automaton we will look at the differences between dfa and nfa later so first of all what is a finite automaton or a finite state machine you see there are many finite automata around us in in our daily life we actually use many of these things around us something as simple as say an automatic door an automatic door which opens sideways it's it's not like this uh, sliding door it actually opens okay so it has a front pad and a rear pad so it detects if someone is standing on the front pad or rear pad and then makes a decision whether it should open or not okay so we can imagine this door having two possible states either it is in a closed state or in an open state right so even in computer science um any program you write one way of formally understanding that program is how it is changing the state of your ram or your memory whatever memory that is it can be ram it can be hard disk whatever it is how it is changing the state of your memory imagine say you have say some five variables in your program and uh, these five variables are stored in five cells in the ram your program is allocated only these five cells now you perform some operations on these variables maybe you change one variable now that variable is updated in the ram so the ram state has changed initially five variables that entire thing is your state of the ram even if one variable changes the entire ram state changes okay so now the ram is in a in a new state the memory is in a new state then you change one more variable then it goes to another state 
then maybe you update the previous variable again then it goes to another state so this you can imagine you take a snapshot of the ram at each stage at each stage whatever is the snapshot of the ram whatever is the values of the variables in those five cells at that particular snapshot that is the state of the ram and the state keeps changing with every instruction with every update you are making even if a single variable is changed the entire ram state has changed okay so you can understand how the program is behaving by looking at the way the state of the ram is changing all right so a machine is basically nothing but different states a machine moves from one state to another state depending on the input it gets so that's the simplest definition of a machine it is made up of some set of states and some set of inputs which define the state change that's all so here the machine is the door and it is in possibly two states it is either in a closed state or in an open state right now depending on the input it will either change its state or remain in the same state okay now imagine the door is closed now someone is standing on the front pad now what should the door do should it change its state or not change its state should it open or remain closed if someone is standing on the front pad should it open it should open right okay so if it gets the input front it goes to it goes from closed state to open state all right now suppose if um, both the pads are empty no one is standing on either pad then if it is in a closed state should it remain in the same state or should it open it should remain in the same state right so if the input is neither pad is occupied so that if the input is neither a closed door will remain closed okay and um, if suppose both the pads are occupied someone is standing in the on the front pad someone is standing on the rear pad should the door open no this is not a sliding door if it opens it hits the rear person so it should remain closed okay so if both the pads are occupied even then it should remain closed imagine there is someone standing only on the rear pad not on the front pad should the door open no it should not open because it will again hit the rear person because it's opening only in one direction it's not opening in any arbitrary direction it is opening only rear side okay so if someone is standing on the rear pad even then it should remain closed all right now um, suppose if the door is open already now someone is standing on the front pad should the door remain open or it should get closed first someone stepped on the front pad the door opened that person passed now immediately some other person came some second person came and stood on the front pad the open door should it remain open that's all it should remain open so if the input is front if the door is open and if it again gets the input front it should remain open okay and if someone is standing on the rear pad should it remain open or should it close if it closes again it hits that person if someone is standing on the rear pad maybe they intend to go out the door is already open let them go out so you remain open right and if someone is standing on both the pads an open door should remain open or closed it should remain open let them pass right and if someone is and if none of the pads are occupied so the open door should remain open or closed it should be closed no one is passing just close the door right so now open door from the so the door should go from open state to closed state on the input neither okay 
so this is a finite state machine or a finite automaton you have some states you have some inputs depending on the current state and the current input you either go to some other state or you remain in the same state that's it it's as simple as that so can you think of some examples of finite state machines around us there are many finite automata around us exactly yes lift an elevator is a very good example of a finite state machine you are in a particular floor each floor is a state and you get an input of the target floor if the input is different from the current floor you go to that state if the input is same as the current floor you remain in the same floor you remain in the same state that's it right or something as simple as a digital switch if it is off you press the switch it goes to on state if it is on you press the same switch it goes to the off state as simple as that or uh, many things uh, most of the home appliances like washing machine or uh, microwave all these things whatever small digital computers they have they are these finite state machines some input go to that state another input go to this state that's all you don't need very complex mechanism or complex programming for these finite state machines to work right that's all so we have finite state machines around us and they just follow this kind of uh, mechanism some finite set of states and some finite set of uh, inputs and decide which state to move to based on the input and the current state that's it so this finite state machine it is basically a one bit machine so you only need one bit of memory to store this machine because there are only two states the door is either closed or open so you need only two, two states which means only one bit it's either zero or one so one bit is sufficient for you to store the state values of this door if it is zero it is closed if it is one it is open that's all all right so the more number of states you have the more memory your machine needs okay and uh, this machine right now we used a diagram to represent it mathematically we will see how to mathematically represent it but in a more formal way in between exact formal representation and an informal representation like a diagram a semi formal representation is that of a table so here i will list the states there are two possible states open or closed and here i will list all the different possible inputs how many different inputs are there how many different possible inputs four right front rear both neither only different uh, four different possible inputs are there so front rear both neither okay so this is state and this is input signal all right so if the door is in, a, in an open state and someone is standing at the front should it remain in open state or should it get closed you just see the diagram so it's in an open state and someone is standing at front it should remain in open state okay so here the output is open and again the door is open and someone is standing on the rear pad should it remain open or closed it should remain open if it is open and someone is standing on both the pads it should remain open why am i not getting any answers did you guys not understand or you want me to explain something again the door is in an open state and it is getting the input both it remains in open state that's it that's it right the door is open and 
both the pads are empty should get closed the door is closed and someone is standing on the front pad open the door is closed and someone is standing on the rear pad yeah it should remain closed because if it opens it hits the rear person the door is closed and someone is standing on both the pads it should remain closed again because otherwise it will hit the rear person the door is closed and no one is standing on any pad it should remain closed no need to open okay that's it quite simple all right let's take one more example um so imagine there are three states and let's label them as s1 s2 s3 now in any machine we should we should actually specify the start state where does the machine start okay what is the initial state so that we represent using an incoming arrow to that state okay and apart from the start state the machine may also uh, end up in an accept state so what we call as final state or accept state it need not be one it can be there can be more than one final states or accept states so let us assume s2 is a final state and it is represented using two circles so what do we mean by accept state suppose you have written a c program now how does the compiler know that how does the compiler give a syntax error like how does it know maybe you missed a semicolon or maybe you missed a closing bracket whatever it is basically it reads character by character and if at all it finds an error at some point maybe a missing bracket then it goes to or suppose it finishes reading the string okay if it ends up in a non accept state it understands that your program has an error if it ends up in an accept state by the time it finishes reading the entire program it understands that your program has no errors at least no syntactic errors okay so the states are changing constantly based on the next input character next input letter next input letter by the time you are done reading all the input letters if you land up in an accept state it means your string is a valid string by the time you are done reading all the letters if you land up in a non accept state it means your string is an invalid string that is not a string which is acceptable to this machine okay so we'll see more examples later so suppose this machine is defined like this suppose on input a it remains in s1 on input b it goes to s2 okay first of all all the examples which we will be discussing from now they assume sigma equal to a comma b except second example which we will discuss immediately after this except that all other examples which we will be discussing they assume sigma equal to a comma b so only two characters in my alphabet set and uh, every machine uh, recognizes some language over this alphabet set all right now since there are three states and two letters how many different possible arrows we will get in this machine for each state we should specify where does it go on each input so for s1 i should say where does it go on input a where does it go on input b for s2 i should specify where does it go on input a where does it go on input b so for each such state i should specify where does it go on each input so if there are m states and then characters in my alphabet totally how many arrows will be there in my uh, machine other than the starting arrow m times n that's it number of states times number of inputs because for each state i should have n outgoing arrows for n inputs if there are m states i should have m into n outgoing arrows that's all okay so here there are three states and two letters so i should have six arrows totally 
other than the start state arrow you ignore that we should have six arrows okay so s1 on input a remains in s1 on input b it goes to s2 and uh, s2 on input a it goes to s3 and um, on input b it goes to s1 and s3 on both the inputs a and b it goes to s2 okay so this is just some machine let's not right now worry about what kind of strings this machine accepts or what language this machine accepts but this is a machine now given a particular string we should be able to say whether this machine accepts the string or not so let's take some input string a b a b is this string accepted by this machine yes we should start from the initial state always no yes how many no how many yes okay so when i mean is it accepted or not accepted what do i mean by the time it finishes reading this string is it ending up in an accept state or a non accept state if it is ending up in an accept state that is a state with two circle then this string is accepted by the machine if it is ending up in a non accept state then this string is not being accepted by the machine so now tell me what is the ending state by the time it finishes reading this string s1 is s1 an accept state no then it should not accept this string that's all right so what is the sequence s1 you are in s1 you start with s1 always you start with the initial state then you read the first character a s1 on reading a it goes to s1 only okay so you go to s1 again s1 now it reads the second character it reads b s1 on reading b goes to s2 just a minute s1 on reading a goes to s1 s1 on reading b goes to s2 and s2 on reading a goes to s3 s3 on reading b goes to s2 s2 on reading b goes to s1 right s1 is not a final state so this is not a valid string so this is an invalid string okay now suppose i add one more letter b now this entire string a b a triple b is it accepted by the machine yes because you are in s1 you see one more b now you go to s2 since s2 is an accept state this entire string this is a valid string okay let me put it in green all right so that is how a string is uh, said to be accepted or not accepted by a machine so there can be million strings which are accepted by this machine there can be million string strings which are not accepted by this machine we will see again um, why when we are discussing regular languages when we come to the examples of language we will see that but right now you just understand given any string i should be able to say whether this string is accepted by this machine or not that's all okay this is clear and there can be more than one accept state if it lands up in any of the accept state it is said to be accepted it need not land up in every accept state it is not possible also it will always land up in one state and if that one state falls in the set of accept states that string is said to be accepted okay all right
now let's look at an example of um, regular languages suppose i some you know some uh, say wiki page on some concept i copy this text okay now suppose i want to search for all the words starting with fish it can be fishing it can be just fish it can be fisheries right or it can be fisherman suppose i add that word here fisherman whatever it is you see normally in a word processor suppose you want to search for all the words starting with fishing or starting with fish and um, you want to replace them with something or you just want to delete those words now how do you do it you have to give all the possible different words and then delete them like you have to give fisherman search for all the matches delete them fisheries you have to type and then search for all the matches delete them uh, fishing you have to type and search for all the matches and delete them right you have to type all these words separately and then ask the word processor to do something either delete or replace them with some other word like that but suppose i want to match all the different words starting with the word fish in one go i i don't want to type every different word myself i just want to i just want the computer to understand okay match all the words starting with the word fish so it should match fisherman it should match fisheries it should match fishing it should match fish all these words in one go okay so for that we use something called regular expressions now you see it is matching all the words starting with fish otherwise if i don't use this regular expression if i i have to type the entire word if i type fishing it matches only fishing if i type fisheries it matches only fisheries if i type fisherman it matches only fisherman but i don't want that i want to match all the words starting with fish then i use something called a regular expression now you see all these words are matching fish fishing fisherman everything fish is not being matched so for that i need to change it slightly yeah now fish is also being matched okay so this is regular expression so we play with regular expressions to match more than one kind of string and so on now it so happens that this regular expression will also match non meaningful words if at all there are some it starts with fish and there can be some garbage it matches that also but we can't do anything right now i'm not worried about that i am only worried whether the word is starting with the word fish or not that's all so whether it ends with a meaningful suffix or a non meaningful suffix it doesn't matter to me but at least i am matching only those words which have the word fish in them i am not matching with any arbitrary word right at least that much i am able to do okay so now uh, the task is to build i'll give you this as homework so you try to build a machine that accepts or matches all the strings or all and only the strings starting with fish so here the alphabet set is entire english language not just a comma b but all letters all english letters a to z okay now you think how to build a machine which accepts only these words okay so that's your homework and let me know in the next class right so let me take attendance